So welcome to my talk, Netflix and Chill Like a Boss, How to Learn Languages the Lazy Way. And before I start the actual talk, I would like to specify one thing. When I say Netflix and chill, I actually mean watching series and relaxing, okay, alone. <laughs> those, those who came here for the other meaning of this phrase, I'm sorry, you were just victim of marketing, now you have to spend this hour with me. <laughs> In fact, I won't even be talking about Netflix in, uh, specifically, but let's be honest. Desperate Housewives and Chill doesn't sound that cool, right? So, I think now uh, we can start with the, factu with the actual uh, talk. So, this is my name, and unless you've studied the brochure really carefully, it's the first time in your life that you see it. You won't know me from any blog or any YouTube channel, and it's not because I wouldn't like to be famous, it's because I'm lazy. And every day I promise myself that I will be, become more productive, and every day my evening looks more or less like this. <laughs> but I guess I'm not the only one, because you all came to a talk about how to learn languages the lazy way, right? So, um, sorry. Uh, but I, I think all of you heard um, the quote of Bill Gates um, that says that being lazy is actually not a bad thing. Bill Gates said, I always choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. <laughs> and I have to say he's true, you know. I might be lazy, but I, I was always dreaming about learning multiple languages. And I think actually being lazy, I found the easiest way possible to do it. Now, let me tell you my story real quickly, okay? It all started with this um, movie, Inglorious Busters. Really good movie, by the way, I recommend. Um, so I was searching for the soundtrack of it, and I got lost on YouTube. And I found this interview with Melanie Rolong. I will just show you a fragment of it so that you can get a grasp of um, how it sounds. Première semaine, premier casting, il en a vu 35. Et la deuxième semaine, on était plus 7. Et à la fin du deuxième weekend, il y en avait plus que 3. Et il a dîné avec chacune pour voir comment ça pouvait se passer et tout ça. I was like, oh wow, this language is so beautiful. I was dying to know what she's talking about. So I enrolled immediately to a French course and I gave up after a couple of weeks. Did I already say I was lazy? <laughs> you know, at that time I really hated learning languages. I was learning language at, uh, I was learning English at school and it looked more, like, more or less like this. I think I don't have to explain how horrible the schooling system usually is in, in terms of uh, teaching languages. But luckily, later I moved abroad and I started learning Spanish then. And it started the normal way, so I was cramming some vocabulary and then doing some grammar exercises. But there was, since I've, lo I've met a lot of Spaniards there, there was a lot of practical usage included as well. So we would, for example, meet every, every evening to, learn, to watch uh, Desperate Housewives together. In Spanish, of course. And then I didn't understand that much because I just started learning the language, but I've already seen Desperate Housewives in Polish, so I could still follow the story somehow. And then I was also trying to laugh when they were laughing so that it wasn't that awkward. <laughs> well, okay, it's still awkward. <laughs> Anyways, next semester I was planning to move to France, so I had to learn French. And the fact that I had to learn French was killing my motivation. I just couldn't get myself to study. So I was still just, you know, being lazy and watching my series, but this guilty conscience in my, in my head would just uh, bother me saying, why it's not moving? It's not moving. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go study. So, I just, I was, I just still couldn't get myself to study, but I was still too lazy to start studying like the actual language. So I was like, let's learn something, let's watch something in French like this. I can still relax watching my series, but at the same time, this annoying voice in my head will just shut up. So I started watching Desperate Housewives in French, of course. And every day I was like, tomorrow I will start the actual learning. Tomorrow I will start practicing vocabulary and grammar uh, because you know, I didn't think that learning, uh, that watching series can actually be the actual way of, of learning a language. For me, it was just postponing the actual work. But then, imagine my surprise when after watching Desperate House was in French, I got lost on YouTube again, and I came across this video 
only that this time I understood everything. You know, no grammar exercises, no vocabulary, no conversations with teacher. Simply by watching Desperate Housewives, I would learn French. It was like Matrix. Do you know the scene when he's learning Kung Fu? <laughs> Ever since this discovery, what's happening with the Catalan flag looks horrible. Um, ever since this discovery, I tested the method on many languages, from Spanish, Catalan, French, through German, Russian, even Chinese, and it works. You know, my parents, whenever they see me watching something on my laptop, they don't ask anymore what is it. They're like, what, what language is it now? <laughs> you know. So, um, of course, it's easier when you are learning a language from the same language family, and it's much harder when you are learning a completely new language, but it works. So I was trying, to, I was thinking like, isn't that too easy? Like, can you actually learn a language without any grammar rules, any vocabulary, a teacher that would correct your mistakes? So I started looking for some research papers to actually prove the theory, but then I thought, hey, isn't that how we actually learn our mother tongues? You know, when we were a child, we would observe a situation and then uh, hear some expressions that, that meet that situation. For example, we would see our mother pointing at something sticking out of the ground and she would be like, this is a flower, flower, flower. Okay, so we would just observe a situation and hear some words that, that fit the situation over and over again until finally we would start using those words in those kind of situations, but by ourselves. Uh, there was no translation, there was no grammar rules, and all, all we needed was just context. And now, watching series in our target language, we are like children, you know, we are observing something and then we hear something that fits the fits this situation. But of course you might say, sure, but in the series nobody will point at something and, and say its name a thousand times, right? But the thing is, we don't need it. There's a small difference between us and children, and that difference is we are a little bit smarter. You know, we take it for granted, but there are, there are a lot of things that we already know about the language, even before starting to, le to learn it. For example, we understand emotions. We can read the emotions from people's faces. We know that if we do something wrong, we are supposed to say sorry. We know that if our friend tells, tells us that she's pregnant, we are supposed to say congratulations. And it works for every language. Now, I would like to show you an example of how you can actually understand everything from the context. How many of you speak Hungarian here? Okay, you guys don't say anything now. <laughs> um, let's listen to a fragment of Desperate Housewives. Really short one. Bri, hogy vagyok? Lauren Baxter, nagyon örvendek. Now, I'm going to play it again and focus on what she's saying with when the um, question marks appear on the screen. Bri, hogy vagyok? Lauren Baxter, nagyon örvendek. So apparently those two women just met, they are saying their names, but after saying their names, she's saying something else. What do you think it is she's saying? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Exactly, that's exactly what she's saying. Nagyon Orvendek, which means nice to meet you. Uh, it literally means I'm really glad, but it really doesn't matter. It's just what you use in this kind of situation. Let's try it again, another fragment. Marisha <laughs> Todok! Focus on the part when there are the question marks on the screen. What do you think she's saying? Marisha Todok! Uram Isten, Mrs. Kevo, annyira sajnálom! Nem sírni, tagarítani! So like, she, she obviously broke some place. What do you think she's saying to her boss? Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, I need a shine alone, which in, in Hungarian just means sorry. See, I bet none of you would have actually thought you understand Hungarian. Don't forget to add a sticker to your badge. <laughs> well, I think I proved you all that learning languages through series is actually really easy and efficient. But I know it's not as, you know, a great discovery. Learning um, through watching series is nothing else but language immersion. And you will find, you, you will find information about it in every blog or, or book about learning languages. Uh, but here's where the essence of my talk actually starts. Um, after learning Desperate Housewives in literally dozens of languages, I came up with some tips that I would like to share with you. And I think that will make the uh, learning with, with series even faster and more pleasant. My first tip, and the most important one, is 
start early. I think the biggest mistake um, is that people do is that they actually wait with immersion un until they are fluent, and that's kind of pointless. Many of my friends would say, I will start learning, I will start watching series in Spanish when I'm on the intermediate level because now I don't understand anything. Yeah, and I understand, you won't understand, I, I agree, you won't understand anything in the beginning, but it's not about that. When you're learning a new language, you have to tune your ears to the language, you have to tune your ears to start noticing sounds that you wouldn't notice before to get used to the flow, the accent of the language. And it doesn't matter if you understand the word or not. You just need time, and the earlier you start learning your language, the easier it will be for you to actually learn the language. You just have to expose your ears to it. And then, second of all, whether you are on the intermediate or even advanced level, you have to um, accept the fact that you will not understand everything from the very beginning. And here's why. I took a recording from a B1 plus Hungarian course, and let's listen to it. Oh, yeah, but how can I play it? I can't. It just wouldn't, that's why it's not playing the videos. Anyways, what I wanted to say that um, the audios used in the course books are usually really clear, really slow, and they have nothing to do with the actual talk. So, um, switching from those artificial audios that we listen during our learning to the actual, you know, speed of the conversation will always be painful, you know? You just have to spend some time with the language to get used to them. And like, now I would like to say that taking this step from watching series can be easier than, than doing the, this from watching movies or from actually starting the conversation. And here comes my next tip. Watch series and not movies. See, when you're watching series, you're getting way more context. So it's way more easier for you to understand things. And I would like to show you an example from surprisingly Desperate Housewives. Um, this is the Scavo family. We've been observing them for a couple of episodes already, so we know them very well. We know their voices, we know their accent, we know how they change their tone of voice when they are angry or happy, you know, we know their favorite expressions. That makes the tuning part of your ears easier. You can understand them just like after a couple of episodes, your understanding of them is really increasing. But then there's another part of it. We, apart from their voices, we also know uh, what are their names, their jobs, their problems, their hobbies. This really narrows down the context of what can we expect to hear. So it's really easier to guess uh, what are they talking about. And then I'd like to, to think about, um, I'd like to, to think about uh, watching series like talking to your really good friend, uh, whereas watching movies would be talking to a stranger that you just met 10 minutes ago, right? When you're talking to your friend, you expect more what your friend can be talking about, you have some common background, it's easier to get to actual deeper conversation. But you know that friends should be chosen wisely, right? Here's my next tip. It's really important what kind of series you will choose for your learning. Now, it's a huge advantage if you've already seen it. Uh, it's not like you won't learn anything from a completely new series, but believe me, watching something that you don't understand at all is really frustrating and demotivating, and we don't want to lose our motivation to learning languages, right? So, remember how I uh, watched Desperate Housewives in Spanish, although I just started learning the language? Well, between what I understood and what I remembered from the Polish version, I could still follow the story, and it was interesting to watch it. It was fun. So. Next thing is, every topic, of, of course, comes with a set voc of vocabulary. So before you choose the series, you have to ask yourself a question, what is it that I'm most likely to talk about uh, in my target language? Oh, sorry, I skipped some lunch. <laughs> Am I most likely to, st um, to talk about usual life, politics, advanced medicine, or maybe uncomfortable chairs and dragons? <laughs> Um, whatever you choose, there is one more or less important factor, um, and that is the availability of the series. This is what I love the most about Desperate Housewives. I found it in plenty of dubbed versions. I found it in Russian, German, Italian, French, Spanish, and many more. And they even made five language versions from scratch. So it's basically the same, like, it's the same dialogues, the same plot, 
uh, played by different accent, by different actors. And that was made for Turkey, for Brazil, for Africa, and two Latin American versions. This is insane. This is so much learning material. I love it. You know. And now, imagine we have, you have your series already chosen. Here's the next uh, important tip. Do not use subtitles. If there's one thing that you will remember from this talk now, I want it to be subtitles are your worst enemy, okay? And I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna conduct, conduct a small experiment on you. Probably some of you already know it, but just to give you the idea. The instruction is to count how many times the players wearing white shirt pass the ball with, between themselves. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? <laughs> the correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? <laughs> so how many of you got the correct answer and saw the gorilla? Not that many, but just maybe 10 people. See, this happens because our attention is selective. So we cannot fully focus on two things at the same time. And why am I showing that? Because, because our um, attention is selective, this is what happens every time we watch something with subtitles. Even if we understand, oh, sorry, don't the screen. <laughs> Even if we understand what they are saying, if subtitles are on, we still read them. Well, that means we are not focusing on listening at all. And of course, we improve at speed reading, but communication is not about that, right? Listening is more than 40% of communication, so unless you are learning Latin, sooner or later, you will have to work on your listening skills. Um, on the other hand, I could argue that learning vocabulary from series without subtitles can be even more efficient. See, when I was um, learning uh, languages at the very beginning, I thought that if I will not know every single word in the, in the language, I will never be fluent. So I, would, I was freaking out about it. I would write down every single new word that I, I've ever seen, <laughs> only to not ever read it again, you know? I never came back to those lists. And sometimes it was getting really ridiculous. I still remember one word that I wrote down on my list, knee high, so high as to reach the knees. And this is the first and probably the last time in my life I actually use it. You know, but once I started learning languages with series, I understood that you don't actually have to know the word to understand it from the context, and then that replacing the actual word with the description doesn't make you less fluent. It's like saying reaching to my knee instead of knee high. You know, it doesn't really make a difference. So ever since I discovered that, I started applying a new rule to my vocabulary learning. If a word is important, you will hear it again. If you never hear it again, it wasn't that important. <laughs> um, so in short, you have to take it easy. You have to give your brain some time to naturally remember things. And believe me, all the important words will appear in the dialogues um, you know, enough time for you to remember them. And then if they don't, then they weren't that important, right? Now, it's definitely possible to learn the vocabulary simply by listening to the series, but it will be way more difficult when you are learning a completely new uh, language. Now, this will take more time, and take, you know, not seeing progress that fast can be really demotivating. So that's why I introduced a new uh, small exercise to my learning, which I use when I'm learning a harder language like Hungarian or German or Turkish from a new language family for me. So every time I watch something in those languages, I have a dictionary open on half of the screen. And then whenever I hear a word clearly enough to write it down, I search for it in the dictionary. Now let me show you an example. Edem, gőzöm sincs, hogy miről beszélsz. Megvan a teszt eredménye, és az ösztrogén szinted normális. Ez még nem a menopauza. Tényleg? Ha, ez zseniális. Van más is. Más? Terhes vagy. 
So we hear the word at the end, terhesvach, that's an expression. It was quite clear, so let's try to find it in the dictionary. Comes out that terhesh means pregnant. Now, we knew from the previous episodes that the guy was a doctor, uh, but we can still check it watching, uh, watching the scene further. You can, you can check it by simply observing the context. Más? Terhes vagy. Mi? Hogy mit mondtál? Terhes vagyok. Azt, hogy terhes vagyok. Well, it seems like we might be right. Like the guy is happy, the father is happy, so she's probably pregnant, right? Uh, so. Yeah, the guy can be really happy and we can be really proud of ourselves because we found the actual word. Now, did you notice how many times they actually repeated the word after he said he's pregnant? He was like, you're pregnant. I'm pregnant? And he was like, what did he say? I'm pregnant. You know, so, <laughs> and the good thing about Sirius is that the topic of being preg pregnant will be continued for the next episodes. So this is like an automatic space repetition system, you know? You learn the word more intensively at the beginning and then as the episodes go on, it kind of disappears, but it stays in your memory. This is awesome. But why did I say that we can be uh, proud of ourselves because we found the word? See, uh, the, the um, uh, objective of this, uh, of this exercise is not only to learn the words more effectively, but also to notice your progress. I know that in those harder languages you don't see the progress at the beginning that fast and that can be really demotivating. Uh, but now, if you do this exercise, you will notice that within a couple of ex uh, episodes already, you can catch more and more words, like really, it like your capacity increases so fast. And it's not only because you know more, uh, more words in this language, it's also because your ears tune to it, so you can hear it way better. And, and once you know it, you don't lose your motivation to learn the language. Now, what do I do with the, with the words that I actually find in the dictionary? I usually add them to a program like Anki on Memorize, uh, but I usually never repeat them again. And this time it's not because I'm lazy. This time it's because I don't need to do it. See, if we go through all the steps that we do with this exercise, it's like, first you hear a word, and you hear it in the context, so you try to figure out what can be its meaning. And then you have to type it in the dictionary, and here your short-term memory works really, really um, intensively because you just heard it once, and then you have to type it, and it's a new word. So then the dictionary gives you a result, and then you have to recall the context again to check if this result fits the context. And after you got all this, you type it again to the program or just add it to your list. And now believe me, after doing all those steps, 90% of times you will already memorize the word. You don't have to repeat it anymore. And it will, be st it, will still it will still appear in the series in the next episodes. So the repetition um, to keep it in your long-term memory will be done automatically for you. Full service, you know, you don't have to do anything. Well, now I think we have the vocabulary on set up. Now we can, we can move to the nightmare of the lazy language learners, which is our beloved grammar. Now, I have a good news for you. Watching series is like the best way possible to learn grammar. Remember how you learn your uh, mother tongue's grammar? Well, definitely not from the books and rules because you knew it even before you knew how to read. So you would simply hear the rules used in practice so many times and until you actually start using it in, um, in instinctively on your own. And I think the most classical example of how annoying the grammar can be is Spanish and its two verbs um, for meaning to be, ser and estar. There's also hi, I know. Uh, sorry, where did they go? Um, and you can just learn the conjugation of the two verbs and then cram the long list of rules of how to do it, but then you can also relax in front of your um, computer and let your brain get used to the correct usage of the words by just hearing the repetition of them, just like this. ¿Tiene un agujero? Sí, yo tampoco entiendo el arte moderno. Eddie, ya sé que estás enfadada, pero... ¿Que yo estoy enfadada? <laughs> Tenías que haber visto a Víctor. Dice que se puso como una fiera. 
Y si está tan enfadado conmigo, ¿por qué iba a llevarme en su barco? ¿Te he llevado a su barco? See, this is just a tiny example. You will hear dozens of conjugated ver verbs, uh, dozens of uh, sentence patterns of every grammar you rule applied in a practice in every episode. Like, believe me, there's, it's impossible to get more intensive and more pleasant grammar class. And now, the last thing I would like to talk about uh, is speaking. Now, I have a good and a bad news for you. The good news is, Uh, watching series is the best way of practicing and speaking. The bad news is it requires some sacrifice, and namely, you have to become an animal. And by becoming an animal, I mean parrot. See, watching series is just perfect for shadowing, and shadowing is nothing else but repeating what you hear out loud. And whenever I hear a phrase or a word clearly enough to repeat it, I just do it out loud without stopping the series. It doesn't matter if I'm able to repeat the whole sentence or just a part of it or if I get it right or wrong. The only, way, uh, the only thing that matters is that I do it out loud. And then, believe me, it feels weird only for the first couple of episodes. Actually, my roommate start, stopped giggling at me after about two weeks. Now it's fine, they don't notice it anymore. Uh, but why would parroting or shadowing help you speak a language? Well, this is because just as your ears, your mouth, needs some tuning as well to the new language. And think of your mouth as of a muscle. You have to do some, flex like, some exercises to make it more flexible to be able to pronounce new sounds, right? Just like you would stretch your legs to be able to, I don't know, take a bigger step. And the big advantage of the series here again, um, comparing to watching, to learning with traditional methods is You will not learn this artificial slow pronunciation that you have in the audio courses. From the very beginning, you will know, you will learn how to pronounce things like a native speaker. And then, last cool thing about using Sirius as your um, language method is that you can make your favorite Sirius, your personalized language course, and then you can reuse it for every new language. We are polyglots here, right? So there will be a lot of new languages for us coming. And um, you can reuse it without any effort. Like, whenever I want to start learning a new language, um, I don't need to spend time searching for learning materials. I don't need to uh, browse for tips how to learn it. I just start watching Desperate Housewives in them, you know? And the, from the very first minute, I can immerse in the language. And in fact, I know the series so well already that I don't even have to watch it. I can just listen to it and imagine what's happening. So right now, for example, I'm learning German, and I don't have time to, between my studies, job, and preparing the presentation for the polyglot gathering, <laughs> I don't have time to watch series, although you know I'm lazy, but sometimes I have to do some stuff. Um, so I would just listen to Desperate Housewives in German when I'm running, walking my dog, or ironing my shirts. You know, This time, I can I create more opportunities for me to have contact with the language and I learn faster. Now, we have one minute left, so the time is running out. Um, I hope some of the my tips were useful and you will introduce Netflix and chill to your language learning. Thank you very much.